Hi guys. Okay, so book review. I'm sorry I did not get this posted on Friday. I just wanted to not miss a day of my normal vlogs. Um, so we're gonna do a book review today. I have a headache, like kind of-ish. So I made some coffee. Thank you for those of you who told me on the YouTube live that caffeine is good for a migraine. So I'm just gonna use that as an excuse to have coffee for myself. So hopefully this is cozy for you guys. I wish the colors would correct itself on my camera, but I don't know how to do it because it's just looking a little, yeah, it's just a little too bright. It should be a lot more fallish. But we're gonna just be talking about some books today. I'm gonna be reviewing Julie Garwood, The Prize. I made little like these little flags from Dollar Tree, which are so good. And I just fell in love with these flags all over again when I was using them for this book. But this is the book we're gonna review today. Um, so hopefully some of you got your hands on the book and you read it and you're here to kind of like hear my thoughts about it. And then I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna review next Friday, Ice Planet Barbarian. I don't even know how I'm gonna do this book review because this book was rated X. So um, we're only gonna review this one, but I'll be talking about some of the other ones as well as far as like next Friday. I'll eventually review all the other ones as well. And then I just got this book in the mail which is rule number one, you can't date the coach's daughter. I've just kind of been seeing this on book talk and I wanted to give it a read. So I think this is definitely like um, young audience-ish. So yeah, I have, I have no idea what, what this really is about, but it just looked cute. So I decided I wanted to read it. Um, and then I will link all of these down below as well. I found these at Walmart, by the way. So if you're at Walmart, stop and see if you have them. If not, I will link them for you from Amazon. Now, what I will say about these um, that I forgot to mention in my YouTube live, somebody asked, is it like an audiobook? I believe so, I'm not sure, but I would say get your hands on the print anyways because the prints have a special addition to them. They give you more of the book after it's over, which I'm glad that I've read them this way because if I sat and thought about like how it really ended, I feel like I wasn't getting quite enough. So she gives you quite a bit more. It's almost like this, this much more of the book. So you get a lot. Um, so I would say get your hands on the print because I really liked the the ends. So they're only available in the prints. I don't know, but there it is. Oh, that coffee is so good. Loki's taking his nap. It's his nap time, so he's not going to be in here. And I'm so excited to finally review Julie Gar with the prize. Like, look, this book is on its last legs. I'm going to have to get another copy of this. This, whenever I get asked what book would I recommend for you guys to start reading in terms of a certain author, I always include the prize in a top five that I would give a list to you guys that you should start reading. Like this would be a great book to like pick up and read as one of your first. And I'm not actually sure if this is number one, number one for me from Julie Garwood, but it's right there. It's right there with um, this other book that I have not reviewed yet. And, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It kind of like goes back and forth from one to number two. Like I remember the first time I read this and how shook I was when the tables turned. Like, so basically Nicola is the female character and Royce is the the male character. So this was set in England in the year 1066. Okay, so this was a time where England and Saxons were, I think, having some issues. Um, the way that this was written, I could be saying that wrong. But basically, the king of England in this book, William, he, um, 
he's trying to kind of like marry the the two sides together for peace um and there is a girl nicola who is you know no family and she has these a bunch of holdings like she's very rich she comes with a lot of land and that's how like you were known to be rich in those days was by land and so she just was the ultimate prize um which is like i get chills when i think about this title because is the prize her but um so so william sends William asks his knights and he's like, okay, who wants to go, like, basically get her and bring her here to my court? Um, because, you know, he, the king would appoint marriages. So the king requests that somebody go and basically fetch her and bring her. Well, she's not having it. And she's very smart. She's very talented in, like, battle-ish, right? So... So he sends his first knight and she basically shoots an arrow into his butt kind of thing. It's kind of funny. Like it's just has some humor and comedy to it, you know? So sends another. She gets rid of him as well. And in comes Royce. And Royce is like, and he is the best. He is the king's favorite. He is a baron. So that's his title. And he is a fierce warrior, so he is the guy that, like, trains all the warriors, and he trains, like, the elite. Like, his warriors basically don't even die in battle. Like, they're that good. And so Royce is like, okay, like, fine, I'll, I'll go do this. And he is realizing when he gets there, you know, that, um, that she is quite quite feisty and he hasn't seen her but like over the walls kind of thing you know and so she even tricks him at one point because he comes into the, her holding and she dresses herself as like a nun I think which is so funny because she's just so smart and she basically makes him think that there's a twin and she's the twin but the twin is like a nun but she's covered up so he really can't see much and he but he was still attracted to her and he felt like he felt like, whoa, this is weird, this is wrong, I'm not supposed to be attracted to a nun. Like, this is against, like, the church rules. And so he was kind of irritated about that. And he's trying to find Nicola, and she's like, oh, that's my, she's like, oh, that's my twin, you know, kind of thing. And she's trying to protect her brother's baby. And, because her brother essentially is, she has two brothers, um, her oldest brother is trying to overthrow William. Royce realizes what she's done and he just laughs. He he laughs about it because he's like, oh, she was really smart. So, and he's relieved. He's relieved because he realizes there's no twin. He realizes she's not a nun. And he is relieved because now in his mind he can justify his attraction to her. And Royce is older. I can't quite remember at what age they put Nicola and Royce, but I feel like Royce was definitely an older male character. I would guess he is somewhere in his later 30s, maybe like 40s. I'm not sure. I need, I should have like remembered that part, but I do feel like when I read him, he was written in a way that just seemed older. And so anyways, he captures Nicola and he does it. He's taking her back to court. She tries to run away, which is really funny. And it doesn't happen. And so she, but in this very short time, it's not very much of the book, you know, it's like the first couple of chapters. And in this time, you know, she becomes very attached to Royce in the most unique way. Like, I really love how she wrote Nicola. I loved how Nick, it was like a hate it was like a love hate for her she she took her frustrations out on him but she fully expected him to be there and be protecting her and like subconsciously in a way so when she gets to court you know she's like where's where's Royce you know when they kind of like get separated and and she's just like I want to go home like I want Royce to take me home and that's all she can think about she, she immediately trusts this guy and 
so she gets all dolled up she and she's also written as extremely beautiful i would say that of all the females that julie garwood has written nicola is probably one of the top two that in my head in my mind is written as like the most like beautiful and um she i think has like white golden silky hair and so she gets all dolled up they put her in this white you know outfit of the times and then a gold belt kind of thing and and she walks in to the king's room and everyone's there waiting like married couples other you know lords and ladies single knights the queen is there the queen's name is matilda i think and every like she takes everybody's breath away and she doesn't know like why she's very she's written as very humble she has no idea like of her beauty and so she's immediately like you know trying to look for royce but she's very regal she walks up to the king to find out that she is the prize and that his single knights are going to battle for her hand and i'm just like royce royce you better enter in this battle and lawrence which is his like first right hand man he's like are you going to fight for her and he's just like when he hears because he had no idea he had no idea that like that was what the king had planned he was like she is the prize you have to win her and with her comes all of this dowry all of these lands and actually he told them this before she entered the room so all the knights were like oh yeah we're gonna enter because we're gonna you know when these lands basically and then she walks in the room and they see what she looks like and ev all the knights are like yeah we're we're all going into battle for this chick like we're all that's it and some of the conversations were like there's this guy named guy and he was the most handsome and everyone was like oh he's gonna win he's gonna win and they were like yeah if royce doesn't enter the battle so that was like kind of the talk which i really liked because i'm like okay royce come come win come win me you know like it was so like i loved the plot as i'm sitting here reading this i'm like oh my god i love this and so nicola walks in and he tells her he's like you are the prize and they're gonna fight for you whoever wins gets to marry you and nicola's like in her head she's like oh my god like what but then this little girl is too close to fire and she like her dress catches on fire and nicola is closest to her so she runs throws herself on this little girl to extinguish the fires on her so she's like trying to pat it and get the fire off she burns her hands doing this in the process and she immediately gets escorted out she's all upset she's like where's royce and royce follows her the queen is like okay royce can come with us so the queen's watching all of this and she really has taken to nicola and so it's so funny to me just the way this whole like paragraph or chapter was written the way royce is right there he immediately comes straight to her to look at her hands and she won't show him because he knows like he can tell from how far he was that she probably had injured her hand and she was hiding her hands at that point and so she's like no so she's mad at him which is so funny but then she's like royce are you coming and so anyways, in this process, she's talking to the queen. Royce ends up leaving um, after her hands get tended to. While her hands are getting tended to, I think I, I tagged this one, but it's just like the little things when an author writes like how she was leaning up against him. It's like, it's those little moments where that's how you're obviously picking up that they they're falling for each other they're very they're already magnetic to each other and she's she's leaning into him as if he's like her husband you know because back back in the day like that just wasn't done you know like it just wasn't part of 
like proper etiquette. You just didn't do that. You weren't seen with a man alone. Like you weren't touching a man like that. But anyway, so I liked the little moments like that. And so anyways, Matilda is talking to Nicola at this point and they're by themselves. Royce has left the chambers and Matilda realizes she's like, some going on between them. And because she fell for Nicola, um, she's like her heart, she just loved her. And the little girl that she saved was her niece. So she saved the king's niece from, from that. Y'all, I got goosebumps because when she goes back in, so she changes, she changes into like a blue garment, which from Royce. So Royce had gone back in to the, to the king's room waiting for Nicola to show back up. And she comes in wearing a blue outfit and he remarks about how like even more beautiful she looked in this outfit. Everyone loses their breath again when they see her. And she again reacts like, what's going on? Because Lawrence escorts her at this point. The queen has already left, gone back to her king. And while she changes, and Lawrence escorts her back. And so she's like, what are they staring at? And he's like, you. I did not need to flag that line because I remember that line. So she goes back up to the king and he says, you know what? He goes, I'm gonna let you pick. Changes the entire game and lets the men become the prize. So it's kind of like, who's the prize? Is it Nicola? Is it Royce? And she immediately, like, and he tells her, he's like, the king tells her, he's like, take all the time you want if you, to talk to each knight. He makes all the married knights leave and before he makes his announcement. So everyone's kind of confused and he leaves only the single knights in this room. And he goes, they have now become the prize. So they're not gonna get to battle for you, you get to pick. Because Matilda's gone back to her husband and she's like, she's in love with Royce. Let her choose Royce. I know she's gonna choose Royce, basically. You don't get that conversation, but like, once you read this, like you, you make the general assumption that's exactly what the queen says to her husband. Nicola, the moment, the moment the king tells her this, she takes off. She does not hesitate and she does not stop at nobody. She beelines it for Royce. And they have this little thing between them where they say checkmate. Um, and he says it to her when he captures her, he's like checkmate. So she goes straight up to Royce and she goes, Royce? And he looks at her and he goes, Nicola. And she whispers in his ears, checkmate. And she picks him. When Julie Garwood did that, I remember I was never more shook in my life when she flipped, when she flipped the tables. And so they're married immediately. And Guy, the handsome knight. Now Royce is written as not handsome. He has a scar. Women aren't attracted to him, but Nicola is very attracted to him and the queen finds this out because and that's why she ends up falling in love with Nicola because she loves Royce. They, the king and the queen love him dearly and so it's funny because not only does Nicola find him handsome, but she thinks he's vain. She's like, oh, he knows how good looking he is. I really loved Royce's character. I think out of all the males, like if... <laughs> If I could design my own like perfect husband, a lot of the characteristics would come from Royce. I just really liked his, his quiet confidence demeanor and takes her home immediately and they come across a, a battle, another set of riders coming to battle with them and she realizes it's her brother. Royce has no idea that they're connected in any way and she throws herself at Royce and to take the arrow that she sees her brothers flying straight for Royce so she throws herself takes the arrow she slams into Royce so she's attached to Royce and just the way that whole scene was written was Royce's reaction to it like he was a damn mess over this and so they're trying to pull the arrow, separate her from him, and like what a moment. And um, 
so the really uh, the big chunk of the story is about her her being married because she's so used to having control over everything she's so used to giving the orders so she's not used to being married where the, the man does that she now has to ask permission like that's how it was done then and she's not vibing with that and Royce actually thinks that he wants her to be docile and he learns that he wants her just the way she is. There was one thing I didn't like about the book and it was that her brother physically hurts her. He like hits her. He goes in, he breaks into their holding um, and Nicola goes to her brother in the middle of the night because she has his baby and her brother hits her. And it's just, it's so contradictory because when he shoots the arrow and it, and he realizes, because they have very unique hair, like white spun golden hair, and he has the same color hair. So he see, when he flings his arrow to get Royce and he sees his sister takes the arrow, he cries like a, like a anguish cry in the distance and he retreats. He pulls everyone back because he didn't realize his sister was there. And so that part just was such a disconnect for me. Like, how are you going to react like a true brother should react, realizing you just sliced an arrow through your sister? He is distraught, he is upset. He pulls everyone back and they leave. But then you come and you hit her in the middle of the night? Like, are we talking about the same brother? I, I just, I, that part never ever sat well with me. But overall, I would say about this book, I just really liked how Nicola was written. She is, she is very independent, but she, she relaxes like her boundaries for him in a very good way in a positive way and they both learn that like they love each other just the way they are like he realizes he doesn't need order because that's been his whole life his whole life has been perfect order everything is relaxed you know like all those things and nicola is very fiery she she will come and say exactly what she wants to say and he's like, woman, that is just not done in these times. And Nicola's like, too damn bad. Like, I'm going to tell you, like, how I want things to run in this house. And he learns that he loves Nicola like this. Because at one point, Nicola starts thinking, like, I just want to please him. I'm going to be the perfect wife. And so she's like, she follows all his orders. She smiles. She does the womanly household stuff. And that's when Royce realizes he's like uh where's my crazy wife at and um and I love that I love that he loves her just the way she is and she's relieved when she realizes this and he's like he's like basically saying like just fight with me because like I love you just as sassy as you are and um and it ends so cute I love how it ends Nicola's written as one of my favorites She's not my number one favorite female, I can tell you that. I think, I think my favorites are a tie between Jamie and Judith, which are in these other two books that I've not reviewed yet. Um, but Royce is probably one of my, my top, one of my top favorite men that Julie Garwood, personally. Not Joanna Lindsay, but just Julie Garwood. I, I love Royce's character. So anyways, that's it. That's the review. So the next book that we're going to review is going to be Ice Planet Barbarians. I don't, I know I didn't read it in order. I don't know how the order goes. I still think I might be reading out of order, which is so funny because the way that she writes them, I don't know. It's very interesting, but in case you want to read them in order, you might want to look up which one you need to read first. But this is the one I'm going to review next Friday. And this is the one I'm reading right now. So this is Barbarian Alien. And yeah, so I, like I said, I will link these down below. And then at some point, maybe following Ice Planet Barbarians, I'm probably going to review this book. So I got this one from Amazon, by the way. 
but I will link all of them down below, including including the prize, in case you just want to pick it up. And if you just came here for like a story time, I hope you guys loved the review. I've been wanting to review this book for so long because Royce was not planning on entering this battle. And when he realizes like what the king's doing, he's like, I gotta enter this battle because I think he's realizing like I can't let anyone have her. And but we don't know. Like the way that it was written, you do realize though, like there's a moment where Royce is like, Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go in. He's not gonna let anyone have her. So you do know that. You do know that if it the battle were to take place, Royce would have gone in to win her. And we all know he would have won her, because like he's the best of the best. But I still kind of wish we kind of got that moment. Um, but I do think the way it was written was absolute perfection. And I, that's it. I hope you guys are happy the book reviews are back. I'm happy to sit here and talk to you guys about them. And it's been a very fun fall just getting to read again. I feel like I wasn't reading there for a hot minute. So there's that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.